thank you everybody for coming. My name is Sakit Ali. Uh, and wow, thanks uh, to Jamie. That was a really scholarly uh, you know, explanation. And uh, that's why we have him here, because he's the expert on all these issues. And I'm really thankful to him and all our guests, of course. Uh, they're all top notch. You'll hear, you'll hear what they have to say. And it'll really uh, open your eyes. You know, we have nothing to run or fear or hide from the other, the other side, because we have the facts. and. Uh, facts are aside when, when you get to know it and when you're educated. And the these facts and the law. And the law. <laughs> right. right. Um, I want to tell you how, uh, a little bit how I got involved with this event. Um, Elizabeth blew the whistle on it and it came to my awareness. And, you know, I've, I've, I live in America just like everybody else and I've seen that um, over the past you know, two to three years, there has been this growing hysteria uh, against uh, Sharia and against uh, Muslims being a somehow uh, subversive fifth column in this country. Uh, and it's really, it's really getting to be uh, very distressing. Um, you know, some, when 9-11 happened, there was a period when people were concerned about a backlash and hate crimes. But generally, the country responded very well and with great tolerance uh, and with great uh, respect for the American Muslim community. Uh, George Bush went to a mosque. He expressed you know, uh, his respect. And he reminded people not to target American Muslims. Uh, and that was great. Uh, all of a sudden now, you know, seven or eight years later after that, it seems like the hysteria, to me, it seems like the hysteria has all of a sudden ramped up to a new level. And um, I, it seems strange. You, if there was going to be such a hysteria, it seemed the most likely time for that hysteria to happen would be right after 9 11. So I, I've been thinking, why? Why has this hysteria happened? And it's just a theory of mine. Uh, I think that uh, there's a lot of people, when Obama got elected, uh, were very upset that this man got elected. Uh, they were very upset that an African American was elected to the president, uh, to the presidency. But in America today, you can't say, I'm upset because a black man's a president. Because racism like that is stigmatized. If you say that, you'll be, you'll be shunned. You know, people will say, this is a, this is a racist. You know, this guy's a bigot. You know, this is beyond the pale. So they couldn't say that. So what they did say, I think, is they said this guy's a Muslim, or he's a born in a foreign country, and he's a secret Muslim. And by saying that, um, they used Muslim as a proxy. And in some circles, although anti-black racism is stigmatized throughout America, in some circles, anti-Muslim racism, or anti-Muslim bigotry is acceptable. And so they went with that, and that's been growing, and I feel that that has a strong correlation to what's going on today. Um, so, you know, when I've seen this whole thing going around all the country, throughout the country, in Oklahoma they passed a law, uh, in Tennessee they've passed nasty laws like this, um, in lots of other conservative legislatures they've pushed for some of the laws. Newt Gingrich says that there should be a federal law to ban Sharia. You know, it's, it's really over the top. Um, but I thought, you know, that's, that's, you know, in all these southern states and conservative states, at least Maryland and Montgomery County, that would never happen. So when I saw that Fred Grandy was coming to Chevy Chase to talk about Sharia taking over, that really, that really got to me. I said, you know, if they do it in Alabama, that's their problem, but not in Montgomery County. So I thought what we need to do in our small corner of Maryland is stigmatize anti-Muslim bigotry in the same way that anti-Jewish bigotry, anti-Christian bigotry, or racism against African Americans. <laughs> so that's, that's what really this event is about. Uh, I'm hoping that we can take one small step to stigmatize that kind of behavior. Um, and so I thought, what's the best way to stigmatize it? Let's make a big fuss in the, in the news. Let's go after them. Let's attack them. Let's protest them. Um, let's, let's just humiliate them and embarrass them. Um, but, you know, after, and, but, but, you know, 
I talked to some friends and some people who are wiser, and they said, you know, it's better than that. Better than calling them names, and better than attacking them. Fight bad speech with good speech. And <laughs> have an event and invite them, because we have nothing to hide. And let's have this their discussion, and let's hear what they have to say. Let's say what we have to say, and let's have the debate in an open public forum where they can bring their supporters if they want, and people can hear and judge. And uh, you know, instead of having in little private you know rooms where it's, you're sort of preaching to the choir. You know, so let's let's get out of the open. And let's talk about it. So that's why we had this. That's why we changed the idea of the event instead of just uh, uh, a very confrontational type of event. We decided to have a dialogue. We think that's we think that's the best way, in fact, to stigmatize them is to have the event because when people find out what they're really saying and what they're really pushing, that's going to stigmatize them the worst. So uh, that's. And that's really what I feel, uh, and that's why I think it's important that you're here and you tell your friends, and it's important that uh, these people, uh, you know, get that message across. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and appreciate your presence.